going to a scientific conference takes a lot of time and effort. If you don't prepare well, it can end up feeling like a big waste. Maybe you don't meet any interesting people, your research might go unnoticed, or you just won't learn as much as you hope. But a fantastic conference can be a turning point in your career. You can catch up on the latest on your field, you can find potential collaborations, or even you may be asked to submit a work to a renowned journal. Well, you can control everything there are steps to ensure you make the best out of conferences and that's what I want to share with you today. I recently returned from such a meeting and I wanted to share some conference window I've gathered over the time. Plus, I'm curious about your strategies, so if you got any conference tips, drop them down in the comments, please. Today I guide you on choosing the right conference, travel planning, getting ready for poster sessions or talks, handling Q&A sessions, and I will leave the most important advice on networking to the end. So how do you select the best science conference? Well, participation is key here. If you are in luck, you might get a formal invite to present. If not, find a conference that accepts poster presentations. Presenting a posters can be equally impactful as a talk sometimes. You should even aim to give a talk selected from a poster abstract. For this, ensure you submit your abstract early. Conferences often extend submission deadlines, but it's the early submissions that usually get the presentations. This can be an excellent platform for you, especially on an international stage. The conference should always align with your study area and specifically your project. Attending a conference on a topic you find interested uh, but aren't actually working might not be the best move for you. You are there to both share and gain insight based on hands-on experience, not just theory. For networking, it's helpful if you know at least some attendees. If you are a student, perhaps consider a conference your mentor recommends. Being an unknown face can make networking a little bit more challenging than it should be. Previous acquaintances always give you a head start in this sort of situation. A pro tip, don't attend the same conference back to back years, even if the first one was amazing, because the contest most likely uh, will be very similar. And diversifying your conference attendance exposes you to a broader community as well. Lastly, if you find this content valuable, remember to hit that subscribe button. Travel planning, okay. Uh, let's start talking about travel planning. Choose your conference several months ahead of time. For international conference, it's probably best to start planning at least six months in advance, especially if you need visas to travel away or to return to your country of reference. Book your flight tickets early as well. This is very important if you're traveling internationally. Allow at least 90 minutes for connections within the same country and about two hours and a half for international connections. It's not uncommon for flights to be delayed by an hour or more. So for domestic flights, considering this delay, a 30 minute layover is typically enough. But for international flights, keep in mind that going through migration and security might take 30 minutes to 35 minutes. So you really don't want to miss the start of the conference, especially if you are one of the first presenters. This timing is particularly crucial for your arrival but of course you don't want to, hit, to have any hiccups on your return. Remember to pack adapters if you're traveling to a place with different electrical outlets than your home country. You don't want to be shopping for adapters when you arrive, believe me, it's, it can be really difficult. It's a good idea to have your laptop with some battery before boarding as well, especially if, it's, if it is a long uh, flight and you need to do some work. And I get it working on a plane isn't always easy with limited space and people moving around. So if you are not in the mood to work, there's always the option to watch a movie or two or three. Lastly, book your stay close to the conference venue. It makes networking easier because you will be around conference goer all of the time. Believe me, it can really be annoying to depend on infrequent shuttles to go back and forth the venue. Let's talk about the registration. When you reach the conference, head straight to the registration desk. It's important to let the organizers know that you arrived, especially if you are presenting or you are chairing a session. Plus, you'll need to pick up your badge, and this is so, so important. Make sure you wear your badge all of the time, not just the first day. Keep it uh, on even during lunch or dinner events organized by the company. The reality is probably most of this might not know who you are or where you're from. Wear your badge in a place where it's easy to spot and really here near your neck. Uh, in these ways, others don't have to be searching for your badge to identify you. Very importantly, don't hesitate to strike up a conversation with others. A simple introduction with just your name, affiliation, and what you are working on 
can lead to a quick and engaging chat with participants. It's tempting to stick with familiar faces like lab members, colleagues from your institution, but remember that you can catch up with them anytime back at home. An exception is if a colleague knows many attendees, sticking with them could be a good networking strategy because they can introduce you to a lot of people. Lastly, during the registration, you'll likely receive an updated booklet containing abstract and poster session details. This is the perfect time to skim through it, identifying which posters and presentations you'd like to check out. Poster sessions are a goldmine for learning and networking. While it might sound intense, I usually stay for the entirety of poster sessions, even if they go for hours. There is just so much to gain from them. They offer an unparalleled chance to dive deep into the science, meet the people, and make a lasting impression. In fact, I made at least two of my current collaborations in these sort of sessions. How do I choose which posters to visit? When I attend, I prioritize posters that align with my research interests, of course, and also those presented by individuals I spoken during the conference. However, I also spend a considerable amount of time exploring random posters. It's a mix of seeing which posters draw a crowd, the clarity of the poster, and how engaging the presenter is. If you are presented a, a poster, a word of advice, stay by your poster the entire time. Even if you are feeling disheartened because no one has approached you, within the first 10 minutes, hang in there. The next person that was can be a game changer for you. Aim to explain your research in about 15 minutes. It's ideally if you can discuss your work with two or three people at once. But if a group has been for you, more than 20 minutes, it's time to wrap up and engage with the next interested entity. When you are scheduled to give a talk, it's crucial that you present a top-notch presentation. This means refining your slides and rehearsing your speech multiple times. If your talk is later in the conference, don't bank on using free time during the event to finalize it. Otherwise, you will be constantly distracted by thoughts on your presentation, making it hard to truly engage in the other parts of the conference. And understand that giving talks is a big deal. Your audience could include potential mentors, future employers, researchers who might review your work, and even journal editors. To illustrate this point, during one of my postdoctoral projects, my supervisor presented our research, and the talk was so impactful that an editor from a leading journal approached us inviting us to submit our work. End of the story, the research was eventually published in that very journal. Now a common question is, when is the right time to present your research? Should you do it when your paper is in the submission phase and the review accepted or published? My personal guideline is as follows. Avoid presenting work that already has been published by the time of the conference. However, if it was accepted or published a few months prior, and you are now delving into follow-up research that's acceptable. If your paper hasn't been submitted yet, you might grab the attention of editors like we did. Still ensure your manuscript is well developed, especially if you think others might be researching uh, similar topics or be on the same path. While the fear of being scooped is often magnified, it's wise to be cautious when presenting these preliminary fronts. While there are countless ways to create an engaging presentation, and advice sticking close to the accepted norms in your field. This ensures that everyone can easily follow along, especially if your talk is the last one before dinner or the session. Make sure your presentation is compatible with the conference tech setup as well. Ideally, the day before your talk, run through all the slides, and I mean all the slides, using the conference equipment. Switching file formats, for example, can sometimes cause visual glitches, and you don't want to end up describing what you should be seeing on screen. I've seen talks where the presenter had to spend minutes explaining things like, okay, here, imagine that we have a graph showing so and so. On the day of your talk, arrive at least 15 minutes in advance to the conference room and connect with the tech team. This isn't just to provide them with your presentation, but also to familiarize yourself with the equipment like the pointer, the state layout, and the timer, now that most conferences have some sort of timer hanging out there. Regarding the time and stick to your allotted slot. Running two or three minutes is acceptable, but anything more can irritate your audience, especially if they are anticipating the next session or meeting. Overstepping also robs you valuable Q&A time. Transitioning to Q&A. Assist the chair session in keeping the session dynamic and on schedule. Chair should be ready with a question to jumpstart the discussion if there is initial uh, hesitation from the audience. These icebreakers can set the momentum and start uh, an engaging 
engaging conversation. I personally respect the assertive chairs, but as an audience aim to ask just one clear question with a brief follow-up if absolutely necessary. Don't dominate the QA either. If you find yourself asking several questions, pause to ensure others get the turn as well. If you are hesitant about a question, uh, fearing it might be irrelevant or dumb, push past the doubt and ask it anyway. Everyone's contribution and which is the line. A little tip I use to ensure or to make asking questions easier is sitting near the front. By being closer to the speaker and not seeing the entire audience, I can make the experience feel a little bit less daunting as if you were in a more informal setting. In wrapping up, here's the most vital piece of advice I can offer. While it is crucial to plan your conference meticulously from crafting your presentation to pinpointing the sessions and individuals you want to engage with, ensure you allocate at least half of your time just to mingle with people. Approach conversations with an open mind without any specific agenda or expectations. Sometimes you are unaware of what you might truly benefit from. Essentially, you don't know what you don't know. But regardless of any immediate outcomes, embracing the opportunity to meet incredible individuals is the reward in itself. Well, I hope you enjoyed these tips and don't forget to share yours in the comments below.